Hello and welcome to Tech for Non-Techies, the only podcast that demystifies the fast-growing technology sector. I'm your host, Sophia Madriera, Chicago Beef MBA and tech entrepreneur. My aim here is to give you the skills, knowledge and confidence to find opportunities in the tech sector, whether that's through founding a company, getting a dream job or bringing a fresh perspective to your work. Hello, smart people. How are you? I'm a bit tired, honestly, but in the best possible way. When I last spoke to you, I was just about to re-enter London society with excitement and trepidation. Well, since then, I've caught up with people I missed, made new friends and drank a lot of champagne. All the things I like. Over the weekend, I went to a friend's birthday lunch and this friend got her MBA from Stanford. And there were a bunch of her fellow Stanford MBAs and then there was me and one other person from Chicago Booth. Everybody at the lunch had different jobs. So one worked in strategy at a huge e-commerce company, another did marketing in a big tech firm and there were a couple of people in finance and then there was me as the tech entrepreneur representative. Obviously, work conversation came up with a crowd like that, and I noticed how everyone's job had been dramatically changed by the pandemic. And I mean, that's obvious, but I mean specifically that understanding technology became a much bigger part of everyone's day to day. And that's obvious for the people in big tech and e-commerce. But I saw that the financiers didn't escape it either, which I thought was interesting. So, for example, one of the people worked in a bank where they had to find a way to serve customers and close transactions when all of the bank employees were working from home. This meant that a bulky old bank had to suddenly overhaul its systems and that people who traditionally mainly thought about finance and the financial market started interacting with product teams at a much deeper level. What I thought was interesting was how everyone had to learn to speak tech. So none of the people at this lunch were developers, but everyone had an understanding of general concepts like APIs and user experience design and agile development. So it seems that no job, especially at the senior levels, is now immune from having to speak the language of tech. So I know you, and I know that some of you are listening and thinking, well, I don't know this stuff, so I'm doomed because it's just too way over my head. And to this, my dears, I say, bullshit. If you're listening to this episode and you've been listening for a while, you are way ahead of most people. So have a cookie and pat yourself on the back. There are lots of buzzwords around, but the buzzwords have simple, logical concepts behind them. And if you don't understand the buzzwords, it's not because you're stupid, it's because nobody explained them to you properly. I used to think that if I didn't understand something, it was my fault. Now, I generally think that if I don't understand something, it's because it hasn't been explained to me properly. And honestly, that mindset shift has made me so much happier. And it also means that I'm not afraid to ask questions. I mean, honestly, nobody comes out of the womb knowing this stuff. Another trap that's easy to fall into is learning about innovation in general. And I see a lot of books and courses about innovation. But honestly, I find that term too vacuous to be useful. And in my experience, it usually involves some dude with a PowerPoint who worked at a management consultancy using a bunch of ugly abbreviations and then charging a fortune to confuse you even more. And that is not the way to live. What you need to know is how tech products get made, how business strategy aligns with technology strategy and how to ask the right questions and not be afraid to do so. And luckily for you, that's what I'll be teaching in the How to Speak Tech for Leaders course, which starts on July 26th. If you're leading digital innovation or you're working with tech clients, this is what you need. The link to How to Speak Tech for Leaders is in the show notes. So if you want to learn the logic behind the buzzwords and how to apply that logic to your work every day, then you'd better sign up at techfonontechies.co forward slash speak dash tech. That's techfonontechies.co forward slash speak dash tech. 
and the link is also in the show note. Speaking of jargon and sweeping statements, you might have heard the phrase that data is the new oil. What does that even mean? Do you know? Even if data is the new oil, I just want you to know that data alone is not going to solve your problems. You need to know what to do with it, as in how can you use a collection of otherwise meaningless facts to run your business better. If you've ever looked at user records for a large company, which I have, you literally just see rows upon rows of numbers or just random words and it's confusing and boring and overwhelming to look at and not useful. If I told you to start using those records to make a profit, most of you would be totally fucked and have a meltdown. In order to go from knowing that data is important to actually being able to use it for something useful, you need to take three steps. Step one, ask the right question. Step two, use that question to get insight. Step three, use that insight to take action. So let's do this again. One, ask a question. Two, get insight. Three, take action. To make this concrete so it sticks in your mind, I'm going to teach you the way I was taught this. The person who taught me the basics of data science and how to work with data scientists is a very smart lady called Susie Sun, who happens to be a data scientist at Facebook. She is also my college roommate from the University of Chicago. It's as if I planned it, but honestly, I was, what, I think I was about 20 when I met her and I just thought she was the coolest person in the world and she had fantastic dresses, so I decided that we must be friends. Never in a million years when I was convincing her to go to parties with me did I think that she would actually teach me about data science. Funny how things work out, isn't it? So what Susie says is imagine that you work in a large e-commerce company that sells a luxury women's wear. So let's pretend that we work at Netta Porter. So at a company like Netaporter, you have a ton of data and imagine you're working on strategy or you're working with the CEO and you want to use that data to grow your business. So the first thing that you need to do is, as we said, you need to set a question as your task. The question that you're going to be asking is, given all my data, how can I improve profitability? That's an e-commerce specific example. If you were drilling for oil, you would have a drilling for oil specific example. So maybe you would say, given all my data, how can I work out where to drill a well? But our example is not about oil wells. Our example is about very expensive, beautiful dresses. When you're setting the question, you're not asking data scientists to make you money. You're asking data scientists for insight. So in our e-commerce example, what kind of data would you have the data scientists use? You know this, you have bought stuff online, you can do this. The data that the data scientists would use includes what people bought in the past, their customer details, like where they live, their name, their birthday, and their demographic data. Then your smarter data scientists would use this collection of data to understand who the company's most valuable customers are. Essentially, you're asking who bought lots of expensive stuff. And then you'll just get the top 10% of the people who buy the most from your site. And that's step one done. Step two, what characteristics do these people have? Like where do they live? How old are they? Are they mainly buying evening dresses or fancy work suits? And then the data scientist would delve a bit deeper they would investigate what are the similarities and characteristics between the people who bought lots of expensive stuff. So, for example, are they mostly aged 30 to 39? Do they live in a particular set of neighborhoods? Or, for example, do they shop late at night or during the day? So this information is basically a bunch of insight. It is knowledge. What do you do with this knowledge? You use it to find more people like that and bring them to your online store. This is where it's important to remember that data science is always the first layer. It's taking all of the data you have, asking smart questions, and then seeing what patterns about transactions or about customer behavior come up. 
But insight alone does not get you anywhere. It's like, imagine if you go to therapy and then you realize that you're afraid of intimacy because your parents didn't hug you when you were little. That is insight. But if with this insight, you just sit there thinking, well, now I know I'm afraid of intimacy. So I'm just going to sit here alone, feel bad and put my face in a cake. Is that going to get you close friendships and loving relationships? No, no, it won't. So once you get insight, you don't just sit there feeling clever. You have to take relevant action. So away from therapy, back to data science. I know, random segue, but here we go. In data science terms, that means using insight to make predictions. And that's what machine learning and predictive analytics is all about. So quite simply, if you know who your most valuable customers are based on past interactions, you can then build a model to spot similar customers early and then essentially tailor the site experience, tailor the site and the emails that they would get, especially for those people who you expect will be the biggest spenders. But here, this is the final note. I know this might be getting a little bit technical, but you've got this. You're smart. Come on, we can do this. Final note. Remember that predictive analytics are based on past data, which can't possibly make them entirely future proof. How can you use past behavior to be entirely future proof? It is impossible. We all do weird shit that we have never done before. So (laughs) if that's true for me, it's true for you and it's basically true for humanity. Like this whole pandemic thing that we've just survived. That was not in anybody's predictive model. Or, you know, if it was, they did not tell us. So if you have a shock to the system, past data may not be useful at predicting behavior. And if you're interested in this topic, then I highly recommend Nassim Taleb's Black Swan. It's a really great read. And he's also a funny man. So he's smart and funny, which is a good combination. So as we wrap up, smart people, we have just learned about the basics of data science. So ask the right question, get insight, and then use that insight to take action. On that note, I want to thank my dear friend Susie Sun for all the help she's given me to understand the world of data science. And, you know, I have really smart friends. And the benefit of that is that I'm not afraid to ask them really basic questions because I'm like, well, you know me and you love me. So I kind of think that you're not going to think I'm an idiot if I ask you something that's really basic. And honestly, I do think that that has helped me immensely. Because tech terms can be so alien that they're off-putting. And if you're in a work situation, it can feel scary to ask what tech terms mean. And if your college roommate doesn't happen to be a data scientist at one of the largest tech companies in the world, what are you going to do? It can be tricky, right? So this is why... I have created the How to Speak Tech for Leaders course, which starts on the 26th of July. We will go through the basics of digital business. We'll go through design thinking, agile principles, and AI. All of these terms are buzzwords, but they do actually have sense behind them that you can understand. And when you join the course, I want you to know that no question is a stupid question. As I said, Nobody came out of the womb knowing this stuff, but you do now have to know what it is given the digital economy that we live in today. So come and sign up to How to Speak Tech for Leaders and transform your career. The link is in the show notes. And if you want your employer to reimburse you for the course, because basically it's going to make you so much better at your job, We have a handy reimbursement tips sheet, which you can download on the course page. So use that tips sheet to tell your employer that this is a course that's going to make you super great at your job and that essentially this is an investment in their business and in your career. So check out the course and the tips sheet on techfanontechies.co forward slash speak dash tech and the link to that is also in the show notes. On that note, my dear smart person, have a wonderful day and go forth and conquer. And I'll speak to you next week. Ciao.